now we'll open this up for the question and answer round. Um, or the audience is free to ask whatever questions you have. I only request that you keep your questions very brief and succinct so that we give the Honorable Minister enough time to respond to them. No supplementary question. Please uh, raise your hand and ma'am. Ilil. everybody good evening sir i have only very small uh, uh, just i can say it's like a suggestion it, the rupee has been constantly dropping value against major currencies number two impacting citizen purchasing power in what in a global market what, what in union budget 2023 regarding this thank you sir You take them all together, okay? Hi. Uh, good evening, PUSG. Uh, it was an excellent speech um, and a lot of data. Um, and hearty congratulations that the exports have reached $750 billion. Sorry? By March. We will reach. Yeah, they will reach $750 billion next year. Okay. Um, um, the question is on the current account deficit which is ballooning and especially with China, um, Chinese economy likely to grow at 5% next year, the trade deficit may even go up further. That's one point. And uh, from the services perspective, um, health care economy is growing world over, especially with elderly growing. Okay, I would, have, I would have liked to see a little bit more focus on building care services, especially health care services and accounting services, uh, because that's going to give big boost to the exports and uh, and the uh, and the cost arbitrage between us and india is almost 1 is to 10 whereas in software it is just 1 is to 4 so there could have been a higher leverage sorry uh, namaste sir a small suggestion budget ke liye abhi tak maine dekha hai ki 35 to 45 tax player basically employee on election डे वो छुट्टी पे जाते हैं तो मेरा ये सजेशन है जैसा टैक्स रिबेट हम सात लाख तक गए हैं दस लाख तक है जो जो भी कोई इलेक्शन वोटिंग करता है असेंबली के लिए और लोकसभा के लिए उसको फाइव परसेंट रिबेट दी जाए तो ये आपका वोटिंग जो है वो बढ़ेगा और एजुकेशन के बाद जो सर्विस वाले लोग जो बेसिकली आई बेसिकली बेंगलोरियंस Always 45 to 50 percent only is voting. Sir, Tejiji, sir, it is in your area, the Bangalore area. So, is, uh, you can do it. Thank you. Please, please just uh, introduce yourself briefly when you are before asking Hello. your question. Sir, I am a tra transport operator, Karnataka State Travel Operation President, and also an All India Transport Congress Management Committee member. Sir, we are a very happy to thank the central government for implementing a new scheme, 2023-24 budget. We are welcoming the every step taken by the government, Deko Amara Desh and Deko Swadeshi Darshan. And both are the beautiful functionalities, sir. And it is also in request you that automobile industry is directly impacting of the transport and tourism industry. We warmly welcoming the new scrapping policy for old vehicles, sir. But at the same time, it would be a great in government provide the central repeat of the GST also, sir. GST, GST is repeat so for the benefit of old vehicles scrapping. But now not giving that benefit, sir. Only state taxes only gain. And in also, same of the automobile product rates, sir. Duties have to be hiked, such as a vehicle, including electric vehicle, semi knocked means SKD, semi knocked vehicle, from 30 to 35 percent. 5% increase and vehicle in completely built unit CPW, CPU, CPU from 60 to 70% EV. Sir, request you to be brief with your question. Yes, please. sir. Yes. CPU also increased from 60 to 
and also in the rubber components also increased from 10% to 25% for importing materials sir and going forward commercial vehicles buyers are mainly contributing the tourism and transport industry and since the implementation of gst system we lost central excess rebate on the purchasing of new vehicles sir before the service tax and before customs we are getting the benefit of commercial vehicle owners sir. but now stop the that benefit so request you to re implement the same rebate system for buyers of the commercial vehicle owners sir. thank you sir even the opportunity for respected sir thank you for the opportunity my name is narendra bharindwal and i am the vice president of insurance brokers association of india i just have a humble submission sir i feel the insurance sector from the policy holder point of view is left high and dry so probably uh, two things which government can think about health insurance is very expensive for senior citizens probably gst exemption on that will be a great service and health insurance itself is a uh, healthcare activity so probably if for below people below 60 years of age if that gst can be reduced to 5% the that one one thing and we believe that this budget from life insurance point of view is detrimental to getting new investment in the sector thereby the sector which is contributing for large infrastructure projects and everything it will be detriment for capital generation over there also so if the government can look at that thank you లేబర్స్ because the export houses like the importers ask lot of compliances where we have to meet and uh, with the local workforce we is not able to produce the garments so we ultimately what happens they get some uh, north indian laborers and they put somewhere in the shed and they make the production but all north indians they say from bengal but we know where they come from and in karnataka it is basically from those uh, people there are a lot of uh, crime is associated with people who make illegal other card and uh, the drugs everything so i i just want to request like other ua countries have some work permission card and why can't we have some kind of similar uh, system in india where we can identify those people we can give some permit and we can ask them to open an account and we can transfer the money so that the things will be normalized only thing these people get fake voter id also apart from that everything we can make it and uh, this will help definitely the the workforce of the country sir so my name is pranam uh, my question is on the uh, infrastructure development with regard in the industrial units so some funds towards the development of the industrial units would be very helpful uh, in the current year because there has been lot of issues with regard to movement and you know sanitary as well so that would be very helpful thank you sir i am pc rao president of bangalore hotel association in tourism we have done a very good thing in, the, in this budget and also in the infrastructure there was a lot of things which gives more push to the tourism but as a industry part as a small businessman there is lot requirement which we have represented there is an amount of licenses in karnataka we have more than 26 plus licenses to take a small business out of it 15 license has to be renewed every year we requested to a centralized licenses in rajasthan what is the license gujarat same license should be in karnataka in all the states same same licenses to be centralized that was my request and without renewal also to give an example excise license is charging 9 lakhs in karnataka by every year excise license to take the license then some, some more thing but to, license fees itself is 9 lakhs in highway trade license is 2 to 3 lakhs and there is no bar at all in not only this for everything even pollution control from 20000 they have increased to 1 lakh 20000 
that means if i take 10 years license i have to pay 12 lakhs just for nothing Poli I, we don't pollute anywhere we are not in a hazardous industry but still we have to take such license to why i'm telling you know the two major issues which the po here in the total india itself is price rise and unemployment as you know at the price rise you have not touched the petroleum and diesel prices also mm, that is that please take up that and unemployment only if the employer is promoted the em employment will generate as a please take care sir thank you good evening good evening sir just, just, just one one more just after this you can you can go right up after, after this yeah. yes good evening sir sampath raman past president fkcci advisor association chairman all india manufacturers organization so it's an excellent budget as usual nine budgets have been excellent nine budgets have been excellent this is the ninth one nirmala sitaraman had introduced a joke also that the old political vehicles will vanish i'm sure they will vanish will bring you back with two third majority in 2024 now what do i want as industry representative the only the crying baby gets the milk only the crying baby gets the milk now msmes have not been given adequate support in this budget i would request you to have a look into it 9,000 uh, crores for additional CTT MSC loan is not adequate at all. We are some 6.5 crores. Sir, we are some 6.5 crores registered MSMEs in the nation. 9,000 crores additional is not adequate at all. And banks are not giving CDT MSC loan without collateral. They give some excuse. They say that you have to have that uh, risk insurance. I'm avoiding risk insurance, so I'm, I want, I'm taking collateral. Some excuse they give and they are taking collateral. Now, charity, charity should begin at home. Charity should begin at home. You have given a condition that all the industries should pay MSMEs on time, otherwise that expenditure will not be allowed. Now why not the government? The government is the biggest buyer. I request you to tell NSG that government, panchayat, all the public sector institutions, bank, everybody should be asked to pay in a manner in which the MSMEs can survive. They should be a, they should send their inspectors to the factories of the MSMEs, get the metal inspected, pass it, and ask us to dispatch it or pick it up. That will be the ideal thing that will save the MSMEs. Please, sir. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Please direct. The, the, the rest of it, sir, you can provide the inputs later. Please direct bank lend at 8 or 8.5% okay. for MSMEs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, good evening. So, so that, good evening. Yes, uh, good, this, this, good evening. The, okay. Yeah. The last, the absolute yeah, yeah. last question. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 he he had already started his question. We, we'll, we'll wrap it up with that. The remaining inputs, we'll take it from our cell and we'll pass it on to the audience. Good evening to all. Sir, I'm Dr. Vasu Sarda. I just wanted to tell our country's hospitals are in very pathetic conditions, especially government hospitals. It's very difficult for the poor patient to get treatment in the government hospitals. Especially PHCs become a cow shelters. Kindly do something for that. My another thing, the petrol and diesel, when it can come under GST? Thank you very much, sir. Good, good evening, uh, J. Jinendra. I'm Akshay Mehta, a chartered accountant by profession. And uh, I'm representing Jito Bangalore as a treasurer from there. Uh, sir, one question, uh, one probably a suggestion and a question would be that uh, we have been given a lot of incentives for exports. Uh, also in the, this budget also there are a lot of uh, exports incentives. Also the Make in India campaign is taking a lot of uh, 
craze across the youngsters especially. Uh, but uh, there is one suggestion probably is uh, we do not have a lot of awareness about exports. I as a practitioner, I still see export import being a dream for a uh, trade man or probably a businessman. Uh, doing an export business itself is a, uh, there is no awareness in this. Second thing, uh, there are not much sufficient ICDs all over India. So setting up more and more ICDs would help us. And also uh, one suggestion would be that setting up a database of the requirement across the world of a particular product okay. which can be published on our official data of our official website and uh, people of India can probably take the benefit of that particular uh, database and export their products. Okay, absolute last, last Arun. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, Arun Kumar from Bangalore Apartment Federation. Sir, thank you for being here. Uh, sir, I am representing more of a yes. citizenry of Bangalore rather than the, any specific industry. And uh, representing citizenry. Just very quickly, Arun. Yeah, one of the key issues is, you know, being able to uh, live comfortably in Bangalore. You know, there's so much issues with service delivery uh, across various uh, agencies which are serving Bangalore, whether it is a municipal corporation, the electricity or the water supply, uh, issues galore across all of them, the road network, everything is an issue. You know, the government should make sure that, you know, the, the powers are devolved into local associations, apartment association, local area uh, bodies, etc. That is very important. Thank and it can be a national you. model also. I think this is uh, really wonderful that I could get the benefit of some of these uh, inputs and suggestions from all the distinguished participants today. Clearly, we have a long history and an even longer future ahead of us. There are a number of conflicting demands, needs that one has to balance within limited resources. When you are planning a budget or when you are planning any economic decision, in an ideal world where you have unlimited resources, every one of these ideas should be implemented. I don't think anybody can disagree. Everything could become tax-free. That would be an ideal world situation. Of course, if we don't have taxes, then we should not even demand any services. Because then there'll be not, nobody left or nothing left to serve. If there were no taxes, then I don't know where we would give the poor food grain worth 4 lakh crores during COVID so that India can proudly hold its head and say that not a single person in this country slept hungry throughout the COVID period. But that was possible thanks to all of you. When you pay taxes, that is what helps you to set up the next 145 nursing schools, which will help us to meet the suggestion that just came for better health care for the elderly. The second speaker spoke about that. We have announced in the budget 145 new nursing colleges. Have you ever heard of such a large number being set up at one time ever in the last 75 years? Have you heard of any government which in nine years has doubled the number of airports in India? Only in nine years. So we had X airports up up to 2014, over so many years though. And it's doubled today in 2022. Nine times increase in investment in railways, capital expenditure, nine times increase in nine years. If we don't do that, can we reduce our logistics costs? Can we be competitive to my friend from GITO in, in exports? If we don't turn foreign exchange, then madam, how will the CAD ever come down? Unless we expand our economic activity, expand our international competitiveness. 
so it's a host of issues in which you are working in conflicting demands and priorities which is why for the doctor i explain that our focus is that given the limited resources if you first at source improve the life of the people give them a pakka ghar proper shelter give them water through a pipe gas connection they don't have to smoke take smoke into their body they don't have to go to the fields for toilet or be without sanitary pads what are all of these this is an investment to make india a healthier country obviously every hospital should be a triple a first class hospital and i think during covid the central government gave thousands of crores to all the states to upgrade their facilities if you look at the number of icu beds that have come up in the last 2 years probably be more than the beds we had in 70 years before that the number of icu beds that came up in the last 2 2 and a half years we are the only country in the world during covid which expanded of which was able to increase the supply of liquid medical oxygen from 7 800 tons which was our usual requirement india was making 7 800 tons 7 or 800 tons of liquid medical oxygen every day and that was our requirement in covid when we needed more oxygen i dare say no country in the world could match what india did we went up to 9000 tons of liquid medical oxygen every day more than 10 times in a short span of time and liquid medical oxygen is not just producing it it's producing it transporting it storing it and giving it to the patient it's a whole ecosystem we even imported liquid medical oxygen we flew down containers from all over the world iso containers and tankers to transport it air force planes would take the empty tanker to the far off places in west bengal jharkhand chatisgarh or jamnagar from where karnatak would get their liquid medical oxygen need but prime minister modi said cost is not an issue everybody who needs it must get it we would fly down empty air force planes with the container it would be filled up and the trains would speedily bring them to the nook and corner of the country all the way down to kerala and uh, jammu kashmir but we didn't only do that at the same time across the country in every hospital we set up a oxygen making plant so that never again does the country have to go through such a problem that is called foundation building that is called investing into the future so when covid came it was a lesson for everybody we solved the problem for that period but we have also prepared the nation for any such black swan event in the future that is what i was trying to say in my opening remarks is the mindset of this government now very clearly we want to promote tourism sir in an ideal world there should be no taxes no taxes on tourists also but then we want to build infrastructure for the tourists which is why i gave that example of a helpless leader who says that 85% go in corruption and a decisive committed honest leader who says i'll create an infrastructure that 100% of the money goes to the poor 100% of the money is well spent who works day in and day out to make life easier for all of us for the citizens who makes it easier for us to do business we are we have a national single window i i heard about the licenses you mentioned i'll certainly take it up and these are good ideas this is the learnings for which we come all the way and which is why we have an interactive session i dare say and you have been a very senior leader of industry fcci and 
many organizations we have other captains of industry who spoke today i dare say that look back into the past and tell me how many representatives of government would come and spend more time listening than speaking in the past prime minister modi's instructions to us kam bolo jyada suno kyunki usse ideas aayenge usse seekhne ko milega aage ka rasta nirdharit hoga today my startup session i didn't give any speech at all and i told pc mohan today also they have all heard the budget why do you want me to speak just let me hear everybody but then they said i should lay down the context of the budget which is why i spoke initially but all are good ideas somebody spoke about skd evs the increase in taxes my friend that is to make india atmanirbhar do you want to promote manufacturing in india or do you want to promote imports we want evs in the country but look at the startups look at our companies they are doing such a wonderful job we will become the supplier of evs to the rest of the world why should we encourage imports into the country it will create lakhs of jobs <laughs> natural rubber somebody raised the issue of natural rubber import duty i asked for that Uh, not natural rubber sorry compound rubber natural rubber import duty is already 25% compound rubber was 10% but unfortunately some people were misusing that they do a little mixing bring it as compound rubber at 10% duty because of which our rubber planters were suffering rubber plantations were suffering what would happen next if the price became uneconomical they would stop doing rubber plantation if they stop doing rubber plantation imagine the loss to the country thousands and thousands of families would lose their income point 1 point 2 we have a vibrant tire industry in india which is dependent on the rubber that tire industry would have to either stop which means lakhs of jobs gone or by imported tires which means current account deficit goes for a toss i'm just sharing with you one has to think holistically and that is the job of policy makers and the honorable finance minister and i can assure you everyone i can give a specific response to every one of the questions but i'm trying to share with you the constraints and the delicate balance in which decisions are taken i can share with you another small example just to show you how things are changing i'm also the consumer affairs minister for many of you i don't know of course nowadays even men wear gold at least in karnataka i see men wearing gold and all that <laughs> but uh, for all these years you have been going to a jewelry store to buy any on a good day or akshay tritiya you buy something or on diwali dasra or in a marriage don't you want assured quality if you are paying for 22 carat you want 22 carat right in the year 2000 or 2001 country decided there will be compulsory hallmarking of jewelry 2001 20 years ago but we could never implement it because every time we talked of implementing it there was a strike in all the jewelers prime minister modi said we have to sort out this problem but intelligently understand the jewelers problem find solution to their problem but serve our buyers of jewelry with high quality and they should get what they pay i have had personally maybe 40 or 50 meetings with jewelers across the country 40 or 50 meetings i would hear the consumers interest i would hear the jewelers interest and for your kind information the jewelers were not wrong in any of their points but there was no listening government before 2014 it was a one way traffic mantri aaya 
भाई उसको माला वाला पहनाओ अच्छी तरह मोमेंटो दो एंड आई डोंट एक्सेप्ट मोमेंटो इन नाइन इयर्स आई एम नॉट एक्सेप्टेड सिंगल मोमेंटो आई हैव अ फ्लाइट टू कैच सो माई गाइज आर पैनिकिंग और भाषण दे के चले जाओ तो मीडिया में सब अच्छा अच्छा आ जाएगा आप लोग घर जाके सोचोगे कि यार हम आए का ही खेल लेते हैं पे देन वी टॉक टू द ज्वेलर्स अंडरस्टूड दियर प्रॉब्लम आई एम नॉट एबल टू इंप्लीमेंट कंपल्सरी हॉलमार्किंग इन हंड्रेड परसेंट एरिया बट राइटली सो बिकॉज देर आर मेनी डिस्ट्रिक्ट विच हैड नो ज्वेलरी हॉल मार्किंग सेंटर सो इफ आई मेक इट कंपल्सरी इन द होल कंट्री what happens to all those jewelers in some remote part of the country where there is no hallmarking center what will he do he'll become jobless he'll shut his shop and what will the consumers do there not buy jewelry so we said let's start with wherever there is a hallmarking center and you'll be surprised all the areas where there's really large population and ability to or buyers are there we were able to encourage people 250 or 60 districts probably now pro- increased a little bit hallmarking is compulsory we've covered 90% of the jewelry sold in the country now one of you can stand up and say kya re 10% nahi cover hua zero acha hai ke 90% acha hai and now we are encouraging universities college labs Okay, we will set up. Government will set up hallmarking center in your chemical lab, chemistry lab. That way, you can train people also. So we'll get trained young boys and girls. University will or college will get some additional income. I will fund the entire equipment, and gradually we'll increase that ninety to hundred in the next two years. I've just recently signed the file to give a full support, hundred percent support to set up. in remote parts this all marking set again i am only trying to show you conflicting priorities how you have to balance and come up with intelligent solutions and i assure you i have taken a note of every one of the points that the 14 speakers spoke about and we'll take it seriously but of course there are certain things like gst which are beyond the central government's remit it's the gst council all over the country which takes a decision and if they decide to bring petrol and diesel we have been asking them for many years now 3 4 years 5 years that petrol diesel electricity all of this should also come in gst let's see we'll try to build up consensus some things take time hopefully it will happen for the small businesses i have noted with great seriousness some of your very nice ideas and i'll take it up with the bankers with my other colleagues in the government but truly i'd like to place on record my gratitude to each one of you who has come here today for your participation for your wonderful suggestions and should you have any more suggestions beyond what i have noted i would encourage you to please write to me or write in to pc mohan or to um, uh, ashwath narayan or to uh, samir or to my younger brother tejasvi surya please let us know we are hungry for your ideas because on the ground what you experience if that doesn't guide us or help us find solutions then in the sitting in the offices we'll never the any solution will be suboptimal but when that solution is in partnership with all the stakeholders such as you then i think we'll come up with intelligent solutions to all the suggestions i'm working for a free trade a foreign trade policy and desh bill to come out quickly to the young man here who raised that issue our pli schemes One lakh ninety-seven thousand crores for different sectors, seventy-six thousand four crores for semiconductors. All of these are to expand economic activity, industrial growth, and with each of these units, thousands of MSMEs will also be 
encouraged to come in and once this investment comes in more and more our economic atmanirbharta self self reliance will improve the current account deficit will then go down we won't have to import goods to meet the demands of the people of india so it's again a very deep virtuous cycle that we are trying to address and i assure you ladies and gentlemen there's a bright future awaiting this country this country under prime minister narendra modi's visionary leadership has a brilliant set of stakeholders such as each one of you the taxes you pay are being honestly utilized for the good of the country for the good of the people of the country for the marginalized sections of society and i assure you today the whole world is looking up to india to drive growth in the future is looking up to india to provide leadership to the world and with your blessings with your support with your encouragement we will continue to serve for many more years to come you did speak about 50 years let us not be presumptuous it was not with a sense of arrogance that he said it it is with a deep commitment to serve the people of india that we hope you give us opportunity to continue on this development agenda on this growth agenda so that the country can reach even greater heights of development thank you very much